thanks so much for being with us today on the Martha Zoller Show. And this is a little bit of a different kind of segment uh, because we're going to talk about something that's that is new, and that is sort of bio cleanup. And we're going to get these folks to tell us a little bit more about it. Ryan Sawyer's here with me too, as well as Ben uh, Lichten Walner, which is like the longest best uh, person in the world. Uh, and let me tell you, you've got, uh, you've got, we'll get another set of headphones for you. I, this is my fault because I was yakking with these guys all the way through, but that's okay. Uh, ben Lichtenwalner is with us uh, today and Ryan Sawyer. And Ryan is the grandson of Gordon Sawyer. And I saw your granddad Tuesday, Ryan, where he told the most fantastic story of Richard Kidder, who had been a POW in Japan for three and a half years. You know, he's working on that book and he is just I mean, you talk about your granddad is just one of the greatest people I know. <laughs> Thank you. I know you think so, too. Oh, he, I do. He I is do. just incredible. And you know why he's so young is because he's still learning. You know, he is still learning. So anyway, Ryan Sawyer's with us. He is a, a Marine. You're never an ex-Marine. You're always just a Marine. And then his uh, partner, Ben Lichtenwalner, is still a Marine. And you can tell by the length of their hair, which you cannot see um, because we're on the radio. But you can tell who's still the Marine and who isn't. Ben, tell me a little bit about this business you all came together and how you decided to go into this business. Um, we were trained. Uh, we were actually the first group of Marines that were trained um, by the initial instructors from the Marine Corps to do this uh, mortuary affairs job. Um, the Marine Corps observed it uh, um, as something that the Army did and figured out, hey, this is something we want to do for ourselves. So we were being trained as the first group to actually go overseas and do this job. And when that happened, one of the instructors was actually a uh, quote unquote crime scene cleanup specialist. You know, he r ran a company on the side. So that always stuck with us. And um, in Iraq, um, you know, we realized that, hey, you know, these cleanups that we're doing in Iraq for the Marine Corps and for the Army, we were called in to do these for the Army as well, um, was not just something that would be pertinent to the military, but also, hey, we can do this for families in the homes because we know that stuff happens. And, uh, and then we started to think about, you know, how could we make it work? And this was something that we really um, brainstormed in Iraq. And Ryan, you know, so you were on this unit. How did you all end up, uh, you know, assigned to this particular task? Uh, we like to call it voluntold, <laughs> but uh, we we did join the Marine Corps to to take on any task that they handed us. So so that's that's pretty much how we got into this whole whole thing. And and bio cleanup. What you mean is if there is some problem that has to do with blood, right? How you come in there and clean it up so that it's the place is inhabitable again and, and it looks great. Basically, we decontaminate, rest, restore, um, deodorize. Um, we come in, basically, you take a house that is just trashed from some kind of um, um, incident that you know involves contamination, could be a murder, a suicide, or just a natural death. And um, we come in, do all those things, and um, by the time we're gone, the place is completely restored, carpet, paint, everything, and decontaminated professionally. And, you know, and that's, you know, that's one of those things you don't really think about. But I think in today's world, you know, it's kind of something that people are thinking a little more about because you can't just abandon every place that's ever had a problem like this. You got to move on. Right. Uh, your, your home usually is your, your largest investment, so you would like to take care of it as, as best as you can. Now, are both of y'all uh, enlisted? Is that in the Marines? Correct. Marine Corps. So did you go through Paris Island? Yes. yes. Okay. So first of all, Ryan, I'm going to ask you, what was that experience like? <laughs> it was a it was an eye opener. I I just graduated <laughs> high school and and I was very much a high schooler and uh, I I would like to uh, say that 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 helped me uh, turn into a man, I guess. Well, because it's interesting because a lot of people want to say, and I don't want to get political because I know you guys are not going to be political, but, you know, one of the, the things I say on the show all the time is uh, you know, is this quote that Charlie Rangel said, is poor white boys from the South that are fighting this war. That's what he said, and I get so mad at him about that because, first of all, if I'm in a bind, you know, I want, you know, I want some rednecks there, okay? You know, I mean, I want some rednecks there to take care of me because I am one a little bit, and, and I know that if I get in trouble, there ain't any group of people in the world that are going to take better care of me. But at the same time, you know, you certainly came from a family, Ryan, where you had plenty of options. You could have gone to college. You could have done a lot of things. Um, there, and, and to say that it's just, you know, it's just poor white boys from the South, 
that's just not a fair statement to make because when I go, when I have been with military guys, I see the military as being more reflective of what America's really like than anywhere else. What do you think? Um, I mean, yeah, I could have, I could have gone, I could have gone any, any direction. I could have gone to college, but, um, uh, I've, I felt like I needed to do it for myself and, and also for the country, and um, and and that's that's everybody's task. It's not just poor white boys from the South. It's I believe everybody should should uh, contribute in, in any way that they can. You know, I am not a person that's in favor of the draft, and I know the Marines. I think they had a little bit of a draft in in Vietnam, and certain parts of the time they maybe did. But I do think we need some national service, and and I think excuse me, if you go to college. If you go to college, uh, you probably should be in ROTC for a couple of years. Uh, and you don't necessarily have to join up, but you ought to have that experience. And that if you don't go to college, you probably ought to spend a couple of years uh, either in the military or doing some sort of service. What do you think, Ben? Uh, definitely. Uh, for me, I was never a great student. I was always the kind of person who, you know, had artistic ambitions and all that kind of a thing. And, and just, you know, made an excuse during high school that, hey, I don't need to be worried about this stuff. I've got these other skills that will carry me through. And then at the end of high school, here I am not really knowing what I want to do realistically and, and knowing that I had to do something. So I wanted to do something. I think a lot of people do that with the military. They say, you know, um, maybe I didn't do that great in school. Um, but it, it's not just people like that as well. I mean, Ryan, Ryan was an excellent school or student, and he, you know, joined up. But people like myself um, join up because they want to do something important. Um, which was what I did, and, and it turned out that um, here I, I've I've received an excellent skill from the Marine Corps as a result of joining um, in the um, crime scene contamination or decontamination skills that I've received, um, and I didn't even expect.